Hey guys, my name is Vojta and I want to show you Testacular, JavaScript test runner that we built to make AngularJS development more fun because we were struggling with JSTD a lot and we didn't want to use Mocha or PhantomJS because Angular does a lot of DOM manipulation so to be sure that all the things work across all the different browsers we really want to execute the test on real browsers and that's exactly what Testacular does it runs JavaScript code on real browsers as well as uh, any other devices such as your phone or tablet. So the purpose of this tool is to test your JavaScript code during development or uh, as a part of continuous integration. Installing Testacular is actually pretty simple. I'm assuming you already have Node.js. If you don't have, just go to nodejs.org and get it from there. It should be pretty straightforward. And then you can go to your command line and just type npm install dash g testacular, which will install testacular into your global node modules folder. It's more likely you will need to sudo to execute this command. npm is just the package manager for Node.js. It comes bundled together with Node, so if you have Node, you probably have npm as well. And here we go. We have testacular. So let's grab AngularJS tutorial and let's run its unit test using uh, Testacular. There is only one thing we need and that's a simple configuration file. So I recommend you to grab this example config file from GitHub. So we're going to download this guy and I'm opening the project with text editor. Here's the config file that we just download it from github and the first option that is interesting for us is this files array and that's where you tell testacular which files you want to load so you can see you can use these wild characters and these files are basically they can be either absolute path or they can be a relative path in which case they're resolved based on this base path and this base path again can be um, an absolute path or it can be a relative path in which case it's going to be resolved based to the location of this file, of this configuration file. So in our case we can keep this blank and let's move to AutoWatch. AutoWatch true, that's, that's really important as well because that that tells Testacular to watch all the files and whenever you change any of those files it will execute all the tests. And let's see the last one, browsers. Let's put Chrome Canary in there. And that means that when Testacular is being started it will automatically capture the Chrome Canary as well. And there is, there is a bunch of other options, but these are pretty much default values just so that you can see what are the available options. But we don't need them now. So let's get back to command line and let's start testicular. So we are passing one argument, which is a path to the config file. You can see that it automatically started Chrome. Let's go to filters, for example. And when I press save, all the unit tests are executed immediately. So this is a simple filter that basically converts Boolean value into a UTF-8 character, which is um, cross if it's false, and it's a check if it's true. So let's say we want to extend this behavior to to return a question mark if the value is undefined. So I'm going to open the related unit test. You can see we are using uh, Jasmine, which is an awesome testing framework. But really, um, Testacular is just a test runner. It's not a testing framework, so you can use pretty much any testing framework you like. But we like Jasmine, so we are using Jasmine. So it should convert undefined to question mark 
and expect uh, undefined to be converted to question mark. There you go, we have a failing unit test. So let's do that. Let me show you something first. Let me show you dump. Because you can do dump and it will dump the value into the terminal. Which is pretty cool because all of these things that that's that's happening in the real browser. I mean there is a Chrome canary captured. So you can actually go to console. I mean if you like, you can use console.log. Let me show you that. And you can you can't see anything because yeah because unfortunately in current version of Chrome there is no conoslar so let's use console instead that looks better and there you go undefined so if you like using console you can do that but I think it's pretty cool if you can stay in your text editor as much as possible and that's when dump is really helpful okay so Let's implement this super killer feature. Angular, if it's undefined, I mean if input is undefined, just return question mark. There you go. It works. Awesome. So this is this is how you can use um, testicular from command line which is pretty cool because that means you can use it with any text editor you like I mean I've been using it with Sublime which is awesome but really there is no special support from Sublime so if you want to use it say with uh, Vim you can do that just do Vim code where it was ng tutorial um, js filters and when I save the file the tests are executed if I comment out this line, our unit test is failing. If I bring it back, it's back. Cool. So let me do the last thing. I'm gonna kill Testacular, and you can see that the browser has been killed as well. To run Testacular from within WebStorm, we need to create the run configuration. So let's click here, Edit Configurations, and we add Node.js configuration. Let's call it Testacular Server. But really, this is just a name, so you can pick up anything you like. Path to Node, that's, um, that's kind of silly, but this needs to be an absolute path to your Node.js binary. Working directory, this is okay, that's just project folder. Uh, path to Node.js app, that again needs to be an absolute path to Testacular. So you can see I'm using NVM, which is really nice uh, script for managing multiple versions of Node. But if you're not using NVM, your path is, is going to be probably something like user slash local slash bin slash Testacular. An application parameter, we need to pass the configuration file. So in this case, we are going to execute AngularJS unit test. So we are going to pass AngularFiles.js. But this is just the testacular configuration file. OK, let's create one more configuration. Because this time, I want to show you a different way of triggering the test. So we, we are not going to watch the files, but we are going to trigger the test run manually. So let's create testacular run. Again, path to node, that's absolute path to node.js binary. Working directory is our current project folder. And path to node app, that's going to be testacular-run. And apply, and we're all set. Before we start testacular, let me show you angularfiles.js because that's the testacular configuration file. You can see there is a bunch of files and at the end of the file there is autowatch true. So let's change that to false. I mean if you like, uh, you can use true to watch this, the files but I just want to show you a different way. And browsers, that's Chrome Canary. Let's, let's use Chrome Stable as well. And we do testacular server. Let's start the server and let's open some source code 
and I do change, and I save the file and nothing happens because we are not watching the files. So we need to trigger the run manually. Let's do testicular run. And there you go. You're executing all the Angular unit tests, which is over like over 1500 of unit tests in each of those browsers. Okay, let's let's fail some of them. Like let's command out this line that should fail something. There you go. <clears throat> and this is really good about WebStorm because there is this error and as you can see this is a clickable link so you can click this guy and it will open the correct file and directly go to the correct line which is really cool and in this case I mean it's not super useful but imagine something like that so let's let's split this guy and let's let's just execute this this failing unit test so we use iit which will execute just this one unit test and let's refactor this a little bit let's say we extract this into merge header and let's throw an error here and we execute these these unit tests again and there you go there's a full call stack and all all of these links are clickable links so there is a call to uh, angular for each you want to see that just click this link and there you go we are inside the oh, sorry it was different yeah this one and we are in different file inside for each definition which is super cool I mean this is really great about WebStorm like there is you can see is function if you want to see the definition, just come and click this function, and there you go. I mean, the webson really does understand JavaScript, and that's cool. Okay, guys, so this was Testicular with WebStorm. To debug directly from WebStorm, we need to create a debug configuration. So let's edit configurations, add JavaScript debug remote. Let's call it Testicular debug. And put localhost and the port to testicular slash debug.html. You can pick Chrome or Firefox. And let's set this remote URL again localhost the port and the prefix to your project. Like this, apply, and we are all set. So let's start the server first. And let's say we want to debug this unit test over there. So we use iit to execute just this one unit test. And let's put a breakpoint, say, here. And let's do testicular debug. Like here, you can see WebStorm starts this uh, Chrome. And there you go. You have pretty much all the debugging tools that you would have if you were debugging directly from Chrome. But this has advantage that you have nice code highlighting and you have this easy navigation in between files like you can see for each. You can just come and click and there you go. You are inside for each. Right? So let's debug this unit test. Let's add let's watch parse.key, which is undefined at this point, and let's step into this function. So you can see it's still undefined, but now we already parsed the first header, so it's A. Let's do next. Let's step into, and there you go, it's A comma B, so we are good. Cool. One note to that, if you want to debug again, it's easier to go to the browser and refresh that instead of restarting the browser so you can see we are debugging again so you can again step into and stuff like that okay guys so this was debugging from webstorm uh... thank you very much for watching